This is the Brisbane Lions Big Footy Podcast. Ollie is back on deck this week, and we're talking about Daniel Mick staying around in Brisbane, the GWS game, Reese Matheson's breakout performance, and the first impressions of Alex Witherden. Let's get into it. All right, Ollie, we're McStaying around. Good to have Daniel McStay re-signed for another two years. Oh, it sure is. Another re-signing to add to the collection this year. There's been a few, so really good. Um, <clears throat> a few clubs in Melbourne obviously wanted him as a key position player. So to have him stay for another couple of years when he probably was tempted, and I think he actually said that, yeah, there he was did. that temptation there to go back and be with his family in Melbourne everything like that but mm. yeah he said he was pretty comfortable with the decision in the end and just really looking forward to the future and I think he's going to play a big part in that he's only um going to be coming into his best years yeah for in sure the, the future still a work in progress but even in this season alone you can see how far he's developed like I think earlier in the year you and I sort of lamented some of his turnovers and stuff coming out of yeah. defense but last few weeks since he's come back from that injury He's um, been really solid and, yeah, some exciting times, I think, as a genuine swing man that can go, you know, forward or back when need be. Yeah, absolutely. He's come along so far, probably since the start of the year that you mentioned before. We did probably be, uh, we were critical of him in some games and I think it was warranted as well. He was mm. probably just going for those big speckies, playing like a forward even though he was in defence, but yep. he's come along so Far in just a short space of time, and I think probably Fagan's influence has rubbed off him as on him as well. So, yeah, I think he's going to be great for us in the future, and obviously in a, a better side as well. He's only going to go to another level. Um, with that signing, we've pretty much secured our spine for the next few years. We've got Shacky on the books, Harris on the books, Skinner under wraps, who we haven't seen yet in the seniors, and I think Eric's still got a couple of years left on a contract so that's that's yeah. really encouraging as well oh absolutely it's really really exciting just hearing some of those names you just rattled off they mm. are really exciting players some of the most exciting players we've had for a while now and yeah for sure people are taking notice of harris andrews now and the work he's doing he's had such a ripper season mm. and even Going back to his first season, there was always something special about him. And yeah, I think a actually, Queensland boy, just superb. Actually, this weekend I think is his fiftieth game, which you know oh, has happened in a blink of an eye, really. <laughs> yeah. But um, he's just, hardly. Mi- I don't think he's. Has he missed one since he debuted? He wouldn't have missed too many. It's a good question, and you've caught me on the spot. I would have. I don't think so. I'm sure he would have missed one or two somewhere, but yeah, it's been in pretty quick time, like. He couldn't have got to his 50 games quicker, I would have thought. Um, no. Just before we move on from mixed day, where, what's your opinion on his best position? Is it a forward? Is it a back? Or is it a genuine swing man that can do a bit of both? Yeah, I think he is a genuine swing man because I don't think he's really nailed the fence or up <clears> forward <throat> yet. But mm. he has shown glimpses of being a really good player in both positions. But yeah. Fagan's really tried to nail him down in that the key defensive post this year, and he's only getting better and better. So maybe he'll be a, a defender that can push forward at times. But yeah, I see him just being that really dangerous swing man that we saw. Guys like Adam Hunter, West Coast in the, in the mid 2000s, yeah, really good call. dangerous. Good call. And, yeah, McStay's got all the tricks. He's a great kick, great mm. mark, very athletic. So he can play anywhere, really. Um, he did swing forward briefly on the weekend and did manage a goal, but ultimately it was to no avail as we lost to the Giants by 60 points at the Gabba, another not-so-great um, performance at the Gabba. But um, what were your big, I suppose, outcomes or takeaways from our loss to the Giants? Yeah, it's a difficult one, but it wasn't our worst performance of the season, but it was nowhere near our best day, though. Mm. Um, a few times we really just dropped off the mark and yep. probably 
didn't play anywhere near our best footy, but Beams going down early, that just really, really put us on the back foot. And any time you lose your captain, it's such a hard blow. When you, what sort of injury troubles Beams has had in the past. And, yeah, I think it would have been just shattering for the whole group to, to see him go down. And obviously, Zorko had probably the worst game of his career. It just came out of nowhere, really. Yeah, tagged got out the, of it. Got the hard tag and... Don't think you even touch it at all in the second half. Only five possessions for the game, which is absolutely extraordinary considering the run of form he's been in. It just mm. sort of came out of nowhere, but that just shows the, the great job the Giants did in just shutting me out of the game completely. I think Fagan mentioned in the sort of post-match that it's something Zorko's never had to deal with before, so it was definitely mm. something new for him, and he, he obviously struggled with it. I still... I'm not sure off the top of my head, but I still think he had a fair few tackles, which is a good sign of effort. But um, yeah, yeah, it's definitely something <clears throat> he's going to have to get used to, especially considering his form this year. But um, just going back to the point you made on Beams, losing him early was definitely a huge blow. And I noticed Dan Merritt was tweeted, he was doing some commentary for Triple M, I think, and he said it was just absolute chaos and the interchanges like blokes were coming off and being told it's ghost trap back on because it was just no one knew what to do and they were running around like headless chooks so um yeah it's fair to say it did definitely rattle the boys but um what what did you make of the hit from Shane Mumford because there was a bit of argument was it fair was it you know was it illegal was it was it brutal um how did you see it it was hard but I think it was fair and it definitely Mm. wasn't brutal Mumford's dish out some pretty big hidings over his time but I don't yeah. think that was against the rules or dirty or anything like that it was no. just caught off guard a bit beams and yeah mm. he was just opened up so it's all part of the game and unfortunately beams has come out in the, the wrong end of it but yeah there probably should have been more help just around the ball and beams yeah. was just left completely open and yeah Mumford is a big big boy yeah, <laughs> and when he hits you you stay hit so yeah Beams won't be the last person that Shane Mumford takes down but I completely agree with you it was fair game and to be honest if some of the players earlier in that chain had been a bit cleaner it probably wouldn't have even happened I yeah think, exactly I think there was a few missed targets and someone ran into trouble won't know many names but um yeah it's a bit of a shame but in I suppose good news, because at the time, I know what you thought, but I thought he was probably gone for the season. It looked that bad. But the reports are today yeah. that it's going to be about three to four weeks, which is good news. Yeah, definitely better news. Obviously, three to four weeks is still not great mm. at all. Well, you know I mean, it's saying? better than Miss what it. we were anticipating. Yeah, it's better than maybe an, another reconstruction, which would have been mm. absolutely disastrous. And yeah, would have seen him miss a lot of footy. But yeah, mm. if he can get back in three or four weeks, that would be a win, I think, in this case, because yeah. it looked very serious. He goes off, doesn't play out the rest of the game. So oh, it's just such a shocking run. Like, he's yeah. been at the club three years and just hasn't had a good run at it. Last That's... year, he hardly played a game. The year before, he was really mm. limited. But he's just playing, playing some fantastic footy. He missed a couple of games. Earlier in the season, but he's come back and hasn't missed a beat since. And he's really gone to another level, I think, since taking on the captaincy. You know what he achieved at Collingwood, mm. but he's just played superb footy at Brisbane and just led the way. He has been very unfortunate with injury. I remember um, reading, must have been after the... Did he play Fremantle? Did he play that game? can't remember now. He played the Freo game. Yeah, well, it must have been after that game that they said, you know, it's his second or third win since being at the Lions, and, you know, that's a long, long three years for him. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> out of when one door closes, another opens, and that was certainly what happened for Reese Matheson beast mode on the weekend. I thought he was superb and really, yeah, sort of filled the void. Had 32 touches, 16 contested, six tackles as well in what was a pretty breakout game, I would have thought, and probably a career best game from Reese. Oh, definitely career best game. So much to like there. He just really stepped up. Beams goes off, Zorko can't get into the game at all, and someone mm. really had to get into it, and beast mode was it. Yeah. Really hard of the contest, and he's just so exciting, just gives his all out there, mm. and he's just the type of player I think other guys want to play with. Has yeah, that for sure. Has a cheek about him, and it's only his second season. He, it does feel like he's been at the club for much longer, just yeah. sort of um, just – 
bit of a wire set on his shoulders, really. Just and I think last year he just immediately it was sort of a bit like Joel Selwood at Geelong coming straight into the club, no fear, no intimidation of the older mm. players around him, but would just speak up in meetings and speak up out in the field and yep. really lead the way just despite being a first-year player. And it's just that swagger and that personality that we all sort of come to love. Like if he played for another team, we'd probably absolutely loathe him. would hate him. him. <laughs> but because he's wearing our colours, we just adore everything he does and the, the exuberance and the colour he brings to the game is pretty special. But one of the features I thought of his game was his ability to read the ruck taps and really rove, play a true rove, rover's game and get some centre clearances. I thought, yeah, I was really, I couldn't be more impressed with how he played on the weekend. Yeah, super game and he's only going to get better. Like I said before, he's only second season in now and mm. he's probably only a few games into this season because he missed the, the early part of the season mm. with the injury and he's in the, the NFL for a couple of weeks. But yeah, he's uh, really exciting. Um, he did also spend some time on Dylan Shield, who's one of the GWS guns. Shield did finish with you know, 38 touches, but it would have been a good learning experience for him and, you know, shows he can do a bit of of a defensive role as well. Yeah, absolutely. Dylan Shield was probably in Reith Matheson's position going back two, three, four years ago. Yeah, good call. Yeah, Matheson would have learned a lot off some of those guys out there and to really (laughs) step up despite everything going against us is, yeah, great for the club, great for him. Another player that stepped up in their first game was Alex Witherden. Our look at the, um, I think it was pick 23 last year, but he finished with 20 touches going at about 78% by foot. Such a composed performance. That was the big takeaway I had from his, his game was just, yeah, his composure and his cool head under pressure. Obviously, you know, deep in defense, <clears throat> you could be forgiven for, you know, um, shitting the bed a bit, I guess, but... um. He was as cool as a cucumber. Yeah, just looking at his first game, it's hard to believe he's only getting his first game now because he was just so mm. cool and calm under pressure. And to get 20 possessions in a side that loses by 60 points first up, that's just sensational. It doesn't get much better than that. So, no. yeah, he'll get another run at it for sure because that's one of the best first games you could really ask for. Um, just some breaking news actually won't be breaking for our listeners but just check Twitter and Hugh McCluggage has been nominated for the Rising Star this week so oh, that's fantastic that's news to me because the internet's down in Shepparton as <laughs> been most of the day so well that's that's great um, yeah he's yeah, go it's on. been a while coming I think there's a few of our guys have probably I thought okay we probably deserve a nomination here but yeah yeah, I don't know if it was Hugh's best game on the weekend, but it's probably more persistence and just his work over a few weeks now. He's yeah, for sure. really come a long way. I thought the first couple of weeks he was a bit nervous, as you can be, mm. playing your, your first game. But, yeah, to see him get the, the rising star nom, that's absolutely terrific. I would have thought um, – I'm pretty biased because I just love what Jared Berry's been doing, but I would have thought he would have been first in line for a nomination just – I suppose through the roles he's been doing and performing and the consistency and the way he's built into the season as well, he's been Mm. a real, really impressive player for me. But Hugh on the weekend had two behinds, 19 touches, a fair few metres gained actually, 370, which is up there for our team. So um, yeah, hopefully we can sneak a few more rising stars, but it just seems like there's too much young talent to even talk about at the moment. Yeah. No, Jared Berry has to get one by the end of the year because, mm. yeah, another SCN game on the weekend, 18 possessions, kicked a goal, and, yeah, he's just getting better and better every week. So yeah. I'm sure by the end of the season he'll get one as well. And um, he's pretty much a starting member of that midfield as well and just doesn't look out of place in terms of, you know, the inside grunt work. He's right at home in there, and to be honest, the potential really impresses me. He reminds me this is high praise, but he reminds me of a Voss type player, just the way he sort of breaks out of it and holds his body and stands up in the contest. It'd be, um, yeah, it's, it's, no, a, it's actually a pretty good comparison. Very strong body type guys. And mm. yeah, well, I think it'd be half the player Voss was and <laughs> definitely got a winner here. We'd be pretty happy with that. Um, 
So we'll move on from the GWS game and talk about... We've got Essendon at Etihad this weekend on Sunday. Um, the Essendon game is something that you and I sort of have reflected on a bit this year in terms of one that got away, and we probably still feel like that, even though that was round two, which feels like forever ago now. Um, a chance for redemption, do you think, this weekend? I hope so. I hope so, <laughs> because that game still eats away at me, actually. It's... Mm. Frustrating because we should have won it and should have gone to two and zero, which would have made so much of a difference. But yeah. that's in the past now. But Essendon are going to be absolutely fuming after how they just pulled off one of the great chokes you'll ever see. Like I still can't believe what happened at the SCG on Friday night. It was amazing, and wasn't how it? a team could be twelve points up with a minute and 20 to go mm. and then lose. It was just absolutely extraordinary. I can't remember seeing anything like that in the dying minutes like that where no. the team scores three times in basically a minute. Just, that, just, just that last passage of play as well, like Goddard, one of the, well, their most experienced player, kicking into the man on the mark. Um, Gary Rowan out-muscling Michael Hurley, who's probably the shoe-in All-Australian fullback for a mark yeah. on the goal line. It's just incredible yeah. to think about now, but it does also scare me that they could come out absolutely firing this weekend. Yeah, <laughs> it does. And they've played some really good footy at Eddie had this season as well. Yeah. And they belted West Coast. And oh, I can't, oh, I've belted Port Adelaide as well. Yeah, they did, yeah, A couple of weeks ago now too. So they play the green really well. I think they go to a new level. That Eddie had, so they're mm-hmm. going to be a really tough opponent on the the hard and fast track there. But I think we can bring the same sort of vigor that we we showed against Frio, staged against Port the second time around, and even that that first game against Essendon, that third quarter was yeah, some of the best footy we played for a long time. So I think we match up with them okay, but just their forward line, I think last time that's that's always dangerous for them. The mm-hmm. Bombers, they've got a Incredible small forward line now with the guys like Rosio Fantasia and Tip and Woody. They're really dangerous. So And our old mate Josh Green. Yes, yes. <laughs> he didn't play us last time, did he? So this will be no. the first time that we've played Green as well. So that'll be something to watch. And hopefully he doesn't get on the end of any or too many. Yeah, well... He can score one in the last quarter when we're six goals up. Six we, goals up, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we won't mind that. <laughs> That'd be pretty handy. Um, there will be at least one force change this weekend with beams down. Would you like to look into your crystal ball and predict who you think would come in? Oh, it's hard to replace the captain and an absolute superstar of the competition. So, mm. yeah, there's got to be guys pushing their case with... Had such a good season in the Nepal, and that's just a really good sign for the club. But yeah, we should almost no do one's the, really standing out off the top of my head. But we should almost do the country footy and just tank the reserves and take out the Nepal <laughs> Nepal Premiership. Yeah, yeah. But um, <clears throat> I think looking at the scores from the weekend and get to see that uh, there was no footage of the game. But um, Ben Keys had thirty one, so I think he would probably be a, a worthy candidate and someone who probably. Molded himself in the beams, the way beams plays. So it wouldn't be a bad like-for-like like replacement. Um, yeah, that's a good call. I think you would bring in keys. He's a really good young player and been in and out of side a bit this season. But mm. that game against the Bulldogs at Eddie Had. So he, he likes Eddie Had and yeah. he had beauty. a good run there. So mm. I'd definitely throw him in. Um, also worth mentioning, Tom Bell had a pretty serious injury in the NEFL in the big win over the Giants, I think. It was a dislocated ankle as well as a fractured tibia or fibia. One of those. So Yeah, that's that's terrible stuff. Something Michael Barlow did a week ago. Mm. And yeah, they're they're pretty nasty type injuries, those ones. So yeah, best of luck to Tommy and hopefully it's a speedy recovery. Yeah, just it's starting to get some serious injuries on the injury list, like Christensen's out for the year, Robinson out for the year. Thankfully, Beams mm. isn't out for the year. I think throughout most of this season, we've sort of praised our injury list and how fortunate we've been, but we're starting to get some nasty ones, which hasn't been pleasant. Not at all. And 
that's been a massive problem for us in in previous years. We just haven't been able to get anywhere close to our best side on the park, and that's just mm. not what a young team can deal with at all. So it was going okay at the start of the season, but yeah, it's starting to rack up now. And yeah, you mentioned those names there, and you're just like, wow, some pretty good names sideline for the rest of the season. So well, I mean, yeah. class half full. It- makes for a lot of ups, upside potentially next year when we can get our best side on the park and, you know, get some valuable game time into the likes of, you know, Matheson, Barry, Witherden, McGluggage and k- hopefully Keys this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, we really have to um, just work on those younger guys now. We're not going to play finals, there's no question about that, but, mm. yeah, play the younger guys and, we're already the youngest list in the league by far, and mm. you probably only have to look to GWS a few years ago now. They're in a pretty similar position. Yeah. And look where they are now, so. That's right. Would have been a good learning experience for the guys on the weekend. Um, <clears throat> last topic before we sign off on this episode. Didn't get to talk last week, mate, because you're a bit busy with work, but um, should reflect that Josh Shackey hit a bit of form last weekend with five goals and. Didn't get a hole uh, amongst it on the weekend. Did finish with two late goals. Yeah, got um, two. Good to see him, I suppose, get his confidence up and get get amongst it. Yeah, it is. The five goals would have done his um, confidence a world of good. Yeah, Mm. only the two on the weekend didn't seem like he was that influential. I haven't seen the game, but yeah, played his role in another pretty big win for the the NEFL side against the Giants. Matter of fact, because, yeah, they've been really badly hit with injuries. I think they only had 10 AFL listed players out there on the weekend. So it was good to dish out a hiding because I know their NEFL side's really belted us up. Yeah. Over the years, I think a couple of years ago, we just had no one available on the injury list. We were drawing players from the the Queensland competition. Lee Harding played a few games, I think it was last year, and he was the coach. Just shows <laughs> just shows the state we're in. But um, just back to Josh quickly. When do you think you'd think about bringing him back into the seniors? Would you get him back in this weekend after seven goals in his last two games, or wait for a few more? I suppose ha- halls of goals. Oh, I think you would consider bringing him back this week, mm. playing in Victoria's home state. Yeah, true. Get him back. Um, yeah, he'd probably like to see his family at Seymour after the game. So. No, no door reckon, stopping this time, though. No, they won't bother him saying all this time. Nothing no. to talk about. Yeah. But, yeah, I think you'd give him a go this week. And, yeah, to get the five goals, I think he's done all he can since he's come back to the club, re-signed, and mm. he's played some pretty good footy, not outstanding footy, not banging down the door or anything. But, mm. yeah, I think a guy like that needs to be given an opportunity. I think once he's back in the side, he will just get... World of confidence, and it would be great to see him out there without all that pressure of the contract negotiations and everything going on the rest of his life because mm-hmm. at the start of the year, that obviously really impacted his footy yeah. and just looked an absolute shell of himself. So if you can get him back in the now, I'm sure we'll see a totally different Josh Shackey. Let's hope so. Um, another key forward we should probably mention as well as a someone that's putting the hand ups, John O'Freeman. He's kicked a few bags in the last few weeks. I think he's got a five, four, and another five. So he's almost the forgotten man in terms of the key forwards. So it's good to see that we've got a bit of depth coming through. Yeah, really good competition for spots there. And obviously we're having a good run with it in the the knee full this year and getting the wins on the board. So yeah, yeah, Liam Dawson kicked five goals on the weekend as well. So he he could be one to... Maybe Hammer got the four, so there's mm. definitely guys pressing their case. Mm. Makes for which is what you want, isn't it? Guys sort of um, putting pressure on the senior team. There's no, no, there's not going to be any games gifted to the seniors, and it's exactly it's the exact kind of setup you want in a club. Yeah, definitely, because I think there probably have been times over the last three years where guys definitely were given games because mm. just gifted games because we had no one else available. We're sort yeah, of for sure. just, okay, we need to bring some guys in to replace all these injured players. So mm. guys weren't actually having to perform work too hard as well yeah. as they normally would and absolutely bang down the door to get a game. So mm. yeah, it's really good. 
All right, mate. Well, that wraps it up for this week. I will talk to you next week after the Essendon game. Ah, through win. Thanks, guys. <laughs> That's right. See you, mate.